I'm very excited to show you this product because this is something that I asked for. This is for the Greg Crow Hartman build. It's a very important person in the Linux community. We're building a build server for him. This is the power supply I wanted. And this is uh, one of those really awesome crossover products because it's a server product wrapped up in standard-ish ATX desktop form factor. This is a power supply, but this is a fabulously expensive, but worth every penny, power supply. It's a dual 900 watts. Yes, there's two 900 watt power supplies in this box that fit in a standard 700 millimeter length ATX case. Let's unbox it, take a look, and take a look at my use case. So this is available in five, seven, and 900 watts. It's from a company called FSP Group. FSP Group makes a lot of power supplies. Many, 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 many millions of power supplies. It's in everything, going back a very long time. Now there's some important things that you get in the box. One of those is a USB connection. The power supply has a USB connection. Yes, FSP Group makes some software to do power supply monitoring so you can know if your power supply has died. Not everybody in this use case is rocking a server motherboard, which has uh, typically a system management bus header for these kinds of power supplies. If you look really closely in like say our gigabyte dual server chassis, which guess what? FSP Group power supplies. <laughs> Remember that thing? It was so loud. Yeah, that thing has a special wire that interfaces to the motherboard to let the motherboard know, hey, the power supply has died or is malfunctioning or whatever. Well, FSP Group doesn't assume that you have a motherboard that can do that. So you have this optional USB header that you can use to plug in the power supply so that the power supply will notify the FSP Group software that you've lost the power supply. So you can go fix it. You don't have to rely on looking at an LED that's, that's out. The other thing in the power supply are these. So these are special... Uh, reusable uh, ties for the power cable. See the, the power cable, these are non-locking power cables. So what do you do? Well, you make it so that this thing snaps in and that goes with that. And these are made with a special snap collar. So slightly different than normal power cables. Normal power cables will work, of course. But these are used so that if you install this in like a DIY rack server that has an ATX power connector and you pull it out, you won't pull the power supply cables out with it. Again, FSP Group has been around the block. They know what they're doing. As this is a 700 millimeter long power supply and not every case is going to support that, there are additional mounting brackets included with the power supply so you can solve whatever mounting crisis you might have inside your case. Now this, <laughs> this is the disturbing thing. It's empty, there's nothing in there. Nope. There's just a little bit of hardware that will do failover from A to B. And then in our modular power supply box, we have the power supply. This is 900 watts. Can you believe it? 900 watts in this tiny little package. And this is an auto sensing power supply that will accept 120 North American voltage all the way up to 200 to 230. There you go. One of our power supplies is mounted and ready to go. Now in terms of connection headers, we have two eight pin CPU power connectors. Then we have a total of four eight pin uh, PCIe device connectors, our 24 pin motherboard power connector, and then a plurality of uh, Molex and SATA style connections. As we will be using this with a server class system, uh, it's a little worrying that both of my CPU connectors come from the same cable. But keep in mind those uh, CPU connections are designed to use about 300 watts each. Each connector here will support up to 400 watts drawn through it. So I think we'll probably be okay, but that'll have to be something that we test. Worst comes to worst, you can actually take two of these six pin connectors and turn them back into a CPU connector because uh, that's a thing. Uh, you see enterprise grade GPUs actually use the CPU style power connector instead of the GPU style power connector. Something to keep in mind if you were gonna use one of these to you know, outfit a system with a couple of V100s or something like that. And we can see that this power supply is gonna fit in the top of our fractal case. with plenty of room to spare. This system is a dual AMD Epic 7763 with 512 gigabytes of memory. We've got our FSP group dual 900 watt power supply in the top, and then uh, all of the other accoutrement that goes with this. This is not in a rack mount case because the system is designed to be quiet. And with the 180 millimeter fans in the front of our fractal torrent, that's definitely gonna be quiet. 
If you want to see the rest of this build, be sure to check out that video. But now we'll check in with future me a little later after I get all this put together and put this power supply through some really hard load testing. Here we are after four grueling days of kernel compile burn-in. <laughs> and that system is running like a champion. Now the CPU pigtail, let's talk about that for a second. It's one cable feeding both sockets. I actually asked FSP group about that and they said it was no problem. They've tested it, it's good to go, even with the 280 watt CPU configuration. If that's not good enough for you, we got this. This is a PCIe device 12 volt power connector to CPU power connector adapter. This is something like you normally would uh, see with like the aforementioned V100 or other enterprise grade cards where maybe the chassis that you have has PCIe style connectors instead of the EPS 12 volt style connectors the CPU uses. It is a very slightly different pinout. It's three 12 volt wires per connector versus four on the CPU and of course that affects its ability to deliver power. So you can plug this into a PCIe power cable. There's two remember with our FSP Group Twins Pro and I can have a completely separate CPU connection. I'm gonna do that for Mr. GKH because hey, more wires delivering less current is less resistance on the wire. That's just physics. If this build interests you or building probably one of the fastest and quietest configurations on planet Earth for 128 cores, at least at the time that I'm shooting this video, check out our other videos because I did a, a whole separate video on KC bench rate, which we're using for the kernel compile benchmarking, as well as a full build video for this system featuring the FSP group power supply. So again, big thanks for FSP group uh, for sending this over at my request so that I can computer janitor with the best of them. Thanks FSP group. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Mm -hmm.